In a previous video, we talked about data loggers and how to get the data from your weather station. Now in our setup, we use the 6510 USB data logger with the WeatherLink software. Now with this setup, the console and the server have to be connected with a USB cable. But what if your setup requires that the two be too far apart to be connected with a cable? Stick around in this video, we're going to take a deeper look at that scenario and a possible solution to the problem. About a year ago when I was thinking of creating this channel, I really didn't have a good place to film the videos, but I realized I did have a good space above the garage to start with. I'd be able to use this space to create the YouTube videos, relocate some of the server equipment from the house, and I'd finally have a place to get serious about amateur radio. As you can see from the pictures, there was really nothing up here. It took over a year to make it into a usable space, and while it's still not quite finished, it's darn close. Now that little history lesson catches you up where we are today with the weather console in the house and the server out here in the garage. I ran into that same problem back in 2008 when I first got my weather station. The weather console was in one room and the server was in another, but it was still the same base problem. The two were way too far apart for a physical USB cable to work. So. I did a little research and I came across this. It's a network USB hub from Belkin. Before we go any further, let me explain exactly what I mean when I say a network USB hub. Now you may know this piece of equipment by a different name. I've seen them referred to by several names like USB over IP network hub or network attached USB hub or even USB device server. I guess the name just depends on the manufacturer. Whatever name you want to use, it is basically a piece of equipment that allows you to connect a USB device to a computer. But instead of the device being physically plugged in, it connects over the network. Now let's take a look at how this works. In this example, we have our weather station. Now the weather station broadcasts its data wirelessly, which is then picked up by our weather console. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you could just connect the console to your server with the USB cable, and life would be good. It's when the two are too far apart that this becomes a problem. That's where our network USB hub comes in. Now the weather console will connect to the hub with the provided USB cable. The hub will then connect to your network. After installing software on your computer, we can then virtually connect the console to the server. And now we can begin downloading observations from the console into WeatherLink. Now I'll show you exactly what this process looks like on my server a little bit later in the video. Now, I would have purchased this back in 2008, but for the life of me right now, I just can't remember exactly where. If I had to guess, given that it was 2008, my guess would be probably Newegg. Now the price I remember pretty well, I think this ran around $120. Now the Belkin F5L009 worked great for about nine years, running on Windows Server 2003 and even Server 2008 R2. On very rare occasions though, the device would disconnect from the server. Now to fix this, all I had to do was close the WeatherLink software, reconnect the console within the Belkin software, and fire WeatherLink back up. Now a few times this would require an extra step. From WeatherLink, I would open the Setup menu, select Communications Port, and click Test. It would then find the station and everything would work. I never did have an explanation on why sometimes this was required, but it worked, so I just didn't argue with it. I ran this setup for about nine years, and then I found that after I upgraded the server to server 2016, the software from Belkin was no longer supported and I needed to find a newer solution. With the Belkin needing to be replaced, my research turned up this device from SIG. Now the model number will be right up here. Now, I struggled to find anything good to say about this unit. When I say the Belkin had disconnected on rare occasion, I think being disconnected was kind of a normal mode of operation for this guy. It was so bad I was having to reconnect this device every couple of days. And it was getting so bad that I would lose observations because inevitably this thing would disconnect while I was out of town and by the time I got back to reconnect it, the console memory had already filled up and I had lost some observations. 
So my research quickly turned up another device from Silex, the DS-510. The DS-510 is what I use in my environment today. Now, as I was scripting this video, I was trying to think of the times that this device has disconnected on me and I couldn't come up with a single one. This device has been extremely reliable. The DS510 Gigabit USB device server from Silex features a Gigabit Ethernet connection and two USB 2.0 ports. Now, it's compatible with Windows 7, 8, 8.1, 10, and server version 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, and 2019. In my environment, my Weatherlink server runs Windows Server 2016. Let's take a closer look at how you get this device up and working. Now, from the Silex website, download the USB device server setup for Windows. At the time of this video, it is version 7.3.1. This program will search your network for your device and assist you with getting this device addressed and active on your network. Now that this device is configured, you can install the client software on your computer. Now, in order to use this for Weatherlink, make sure that you're installing it on the same system in which Weatherlink is installed. Now, this particular version of the setup program will install version 4.4.1 of the application software. This is a very simple install that is pretty much next, next, finish. To document the install process, I installed the application software on my desktop. It connected to my device that is currently in production. Now, it's important to point out that a USB device can only be connected to one host at a time. And here you can see the weather console is in use because it's already connected to my server. Now, back on the Weatherlink server, let's walk through the process of connecting the console from start to finish. First, bring up the Silex application. Now, at this point, the device should show as available. Go ahead and click the Connect button. Once connected, open Weatherlink. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to test the connection so that we can prove that it's active. We'll then finish by opening the dashboard. Now, in this example, we connected the console to our physical server. Keep in mind that this works the exact same way even if you are using a virtual host. In this video, we talked about a solution for connecting your console to your server when the two are not in close proximity to one another. Now, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon to make sure that you're notified when new videos are released. For now, I'm Mike, KD9BLW, 73.